So sleep study tests will tell us a good number of information. We can use the monitoring of brain waves to tell us if someone's having seizures at night, which is a definite concern for a neurologist. Um, that's probably more pertinent in children. Sometimes seizures can bring about abnormal behaviors like sleep terrors or sleep walking episodes. So, but we do use that in adult patients as well. Um, a sleep study can tell us if the patient experiences abnormal heart rhythms throughout the course of the night, which again is pretty important for their cardiac health. The sleep study can also tell us uh, how patients are breathing at night. Do they have stoppages in their breathing at night? And what's the origin of that stoppage of breathing at night? Is it coming from a neurologic or a brain issue? Or is it coming from a respiratory issue like sleep apnea? So while it may seem that the vast majority of people who get sleep studies get one blanket diagnosis, we're actually looking at a variety of different things that can help give us details as to what actually is causing the problem for the patient. So some of the diagnoses that you can get from a sleep test are sleep apnea, whether that's obstructive sleep apnea or something called central sleep apnea, which is or originated in the brain. Uh, we can get diagnoses of arrhythmias or cardiac rhythm abnormalities. We can also have the diagnoses of something called alveolar hypoventilation, which is basically persistently low oxygen levels that can compromise someone's cardiac health. We can get a diagnosis of seizure disorder. We can get diagnoses of periodic limb movement disorder, which is kind of a surrogate for something called restless leg syndrome. And then in addition to that, we do observe patients' behaviors. So there are some behaviors that we can uh, determine when someone sleeps, like sleep walking, sleep talking, or something called REM behavioral disorder that we can sometimes pick up on a sleep study as well.